this region, it's home to a lot of smart people. The Pulse connects these folks and lay people for down-to-earth conversations about how their work affects all of us. We're giving people the chance to ask a simple question. So, um, what do you do? I'm the chair of the Department of Community Health, um, but my uh, background is a, as a historian and as an ethicist. I've written a few books about the Human Genome Project and the history and ethics of that science. Um, I've heard a lot about the Human Genome Project, uh -huh. but I'll be honest, I don't know what the Human Genome Project is. The, the <laughs> Genome Project uh, was a publicly funded uh, research partnership between um, scientists here in the United States and around the globe. Mm -hmm. Primary sponsors were uh, the U.S. and the U.K. Okay. Um, and they were doing research in both looking at the entire complement of human DNA um, and also other um, animal genomes as well. So I was part of the genomics lab as a historian, which was really cool because I got to sort of observe the evolution of this rapidly changing science in the late 90s and early 2000s, and that's, that's what I did. Wow. And then I wrote a couple of books with the scientist, the geneticist that I was working under, okay. um, and then ended up moving on to some other work, uh, which was a book just published last year, which is on the history of the race concept in biology, how scientists over the 20th century have thought about race and race difference in a biological sense. How scientists have thought about race. Yes. Really? I mean, like, I didn't think the scientists would give a, a hoot about race so much. There's so much on a more, you know, mo molecular level or something like that. Yeah, so scientists have spent a lot of time thinking about race. And, you know, what my book argues is that much of the way in which we think about race and race difference has been shaped by how scientists have conceptualized race over the last oh, okay. 100 plus years. At the same time, scientists were influenced by popular notions of race difference in the U.S., which were not always particularly positive notions of race difference, no. which is why scientists had many of the same struggles about race and race difference as the rest of society was having. There are some scientists who believe in hard and fast differences between human races. Um, yeah but not many anymore. The struggle today is more around whether you can use a person's self-identified race and or ancestry to organize the, uh, human um, studies. Um, okay. There are some who move to one extreme where they believe that there are certain genes that cluster among certain races and mm -hmm. there are others who say you really can't use race as a way to measure difference because right of the way humans have migrated around the globe and our evolutionary patterns and uh, things Different just don't things. work that way. Yeah. People do what they do and genes have flown between um, groups of people for many millennia um, and therefore uh, going in and making predictions clinically for example based on the color of your skin is actually not a particularly useful way to understand somebody's um, ancestry and their genes and what they may be at risk for. What's the best way to do that? Uh, the best way to do that is to look at your individual genes. The problem right now is that it's too expensive to do that in most cases. So we're, people are still trying to use race as a proxy and saying, well, you know, it's really, we understand that there are social implications and social meanings of yeah. race. We're just trying to capture what your ancestry may be. Um, so we're going to use that as sort of a rough and rapid, you know, estimate to understand your disease risk, um, what drugs you may or may not, you know, want to take in certain situations. Okay. But at the end of the day, those are very poor predictors. Yeah. Um, and I think that, you know, many scientists, though not all, would agree with me on that. Well, they should agree. You sound like you know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, I spent a long time working on a book about this, so I hope I know something about what I'm talking about. And then the other thing that I get to do, which, um, is a whole lot of fun is that I have a monthly improv show at the Philadelphia Improv Theater. No, you don't. I do. You do improv comedy? So I, I don't actually comedy. do the improv part. You, I, you do. I did. Yes, you did. I did. So I tell crazy stories from history. Okay. And I use that as fodder for the improv comedy. Fodder for the too free that white needs you be hanging out with other Primate wives. Baker, touch stars. Baker, wave that the moon real close. Big George, get over it. Stop it, George. Miss Baker, no stand for Big George tantrum. Oh, Big George, Big George. That was 
just about as good as it got. Um, so that was the show last week. It's great fun. You'll have to come down if you're in. I will have to check it out. Thank you. Pleasure. Great Thank talking. Thank you, Mike. That was cool. Thanks.